I'm Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios. We are here at AWS reInvent 2024. Excited to chat with AMD's Nathan Chang. You're a senior manager, field applications engineer. We're gonna talk about AI, but before we do, what are you most excited about here at AWS reInvent? Oh man, I think I'm excited about AI. Yes, <laughs> but also the crowds of like developers and innovators that are here, right? You know, AWS was pretty much like the first real cloud to really start to scale. And so you, you know, you just have this energy always, and not to mention there's 70,000 to 80,000 people, which no offense, eclipses every other show. So I just know that there's gonna be an eclectic, very energetic, very knowledgeable, and you know, technically just experts that are gonna be here that I get to spend time with. And it's a fantastic time, I was gonna say, for you to spend time with your audience, with your developers. I wanna mention AI, we talked about it just a minute ago. AI is everywhere, and it feels to me like it's just blown up in the past five years. Tell us, A, how it's gotten there, how we got to where it's at now, and why it became so prevalent, and what it looks like in the future from your perspective. So it's, it's kind of funny you bring that up, right? I think I've been thinking about that a lot for the last few months, right? Like I recently read an article where I think in the title it said, you know, we've had chat GPT for two years, where are we? Yeah. Right? And you say five years, you know, and interestingly, I think five years is correct, but the rest of the world really says two years, right? Um, and that's because AI has just been influencing us, biasing us in very quiet ways, but very real and impactful ways that people don't know about, right? If you've ever used Netflix, if you've ever used a social media platform, if you've ever shopped, you are biased constantly by recommenders, by models that are basically paying attention to your every tiny little shopping habit. You know, even, even your shopping history, your viewing history, like I think Netflix knows me so well because it knows what I watch. But now you have models that are more human, mm -hmm. right? It's not just doing something in the background or doing just one thing out of the thousand human things you could do, but it's now speaking back to you, it's listening to you, it's interacting with you like a person. And that I think is really disruptive to how we think about AI now. And AI plays a role in the industry as a whole. What are some of the challenges in, uh, in deployment and adoption in your industry? Oh, it's so hard, right? Everybody thinks, you know, hey, look at this. Look at this, it, it, it encompasses all of human knowledge, right? It's trained on the whole internet. I mean, I, I don't think everybody knows this, but when a company like an OpenAI or any kind of foundational model builder takes the, the, the entire internet, they kind of filter out, you know, posts and reactions and pictures and code, and the entire internet gets distilled down to maybe 5% of what it is, which looks more like human knowledge, right? So it's not that much. And when I'm listening to that, the first thing that pops into my mind is censorship, but it's also as much about duplication and things that have been shared everywhere. The internet as a whole is a lot of things. Yeah. The unique internet, if you will, is a far smaller part of yeah. it. Yeah, there's a whole lot of repetition, right? You know, um, a lot of news stories, you know, they don't get their news story out until they've read it somewhere else. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, and the same thing for, with, with us, we're human beings, we, we tend to kind of parrot a lot of things. But just that task of getting that into a succinct, super dense, you know, uh, knowledge base takes a tremendous amount of compute. And then as you've seen, right, in all the different headlines about GPUs and how expensive they are and how power hungry they are, but how very scarce they are, Everybody's having a hard time scaling, right? There's only a, maybe two handfuls worth of customers out there that are really scaling AI. And so now everybody else is taking a look at what could be done with ChatGBT, but then when they start to really experiment, you know, build some proofs of concept, they're suddenly figuring out that, you know, costs are incredibly high to get this thing up and running. Scaling this thing across my existing IT infrastructure is hard and never been done by anybody in this company. So I got to go find very expensive expertise, developing the applications, right? Oh my gosh, what do I do to guard oh, the rest of my data and make sure that this model stays within its scope, right? There's just so much that is very hard and expensive to do. And I love that you're at the forefront of a lot of that. I We've talked to before, we, it's been a couple of months since we've talked, and as we travel around the world and meet up in different cities at different events, what is the next thing we're gonna be talking about? What's on the horizon? Um, so when I think about AI, right, I think about 
because I go all the way back to like, you know, um, 10, 12 years ago, and we're trying to deploy AI, if, you know, uh, using just like LiDAR scanners and cameras. Sorry, I come from the infrastructure world. Um, you know, that's some that's a model, a statistical model that's just doing one thing really well, right? So it can look at pictures and tell you what's in it. That's one human thing that's relatively useless in the grand scheme of what human beings do, right? Um, I think now you have all these multimodal models, these models that can actually interact or uh, interpret the world, not just a picture or not just a sound or a word, right? And it's gonna start to reason. And while reasoning does work right now and it's expensive and incredibly slow, it's gonna get faster. Everything that we've ever built in AI just gets faster. And when you think about you know, how long it has taken us to deploy innovation as like, you know, as, as, as human beings, it took forever to get cars and roads up and running and scaled across the world, right? But this is digital, so I think it's gonna happen fast. I think in 10 years, you're gonna see AI like ChatGPT, models that can interact with you and speak with you in a human way everywhere and getting that out there everywhere yeah takes scale and scale is something that you're doing with your cloud service provider partners your, your partners like aws what are you AMD, and aws doing together to help customers scale specifically so i think there's a couple of things right um number one you know amd we are a compute uh company we basically build compute engines we build many different types of compute engines some that power the cloud, some big giant GPUs that basically train the largest models in the world. Um, we build the chips that go into Xboxes and into Teslas for infotainment, with gaming laptops, the list goes on. Um, you're gonna see it attacked in a couple, from, a, from a many, I'd say maybe two or three specific different angles with us in AWS. One, we're gonna put bigger and more capable compute engines in all the different regions where AWS um, is available. And they're gonna be not just, you know, your uh, run-of-the-mill CPUs, but even bigger compute engines. And then subsequently, you're also gonna see us continue to push the open source community in software. We are not a closed source software company, right? When it comes to things like Rockham, when it comes to things like Zen DNN, which are our um, accelerated software and libraries for AI, it's always open source. And we work primarily with the open source communities. So you're gonna see us push that, but also in models, in training models. Um, we're starting to put out our own fine-tuned and pre-trained models for the rest of the world to start to consume, not just on our, on our compute platforms, but just for the world, because we just really feel like open source is where it's all gonna be. And I think one thing that we're also helping with is model compression. Okay. Right? It's one thing to make compute engines bigger. It's another thing to make models denser and smaller while maintaining capability. Those three things, I think, is where we're going to continue to push and contribute to the ecosystem. We look forward to watching that journey at AWS reInvents to come. I'm Brian Westbrook. This has been AWS 2024, joined by Nathan Chang, Senior Manager, Field Applications Engineer. Thanks for watching. All right.